Hello everyone and welcome to the next Jurassic World Evolution 2 DLC, the Cretaceous Predator Pack. And yeah, it looks really good um, in my personal opinion. We get the Tarbosaurus, which was actually teased um, on Frontier's social media channels where you really just saw its foot. But there are also some other species in this DLC as well. Um, we have the Concavenator, as you can see here, one of the most requested dinosaurs for a long time. The Utah Raptor, the biggest dromaeosaur um, that is known to have existed. And Tarbosaurus from Camp Cretaceous, as well as the most surprising addition, Gigantoraptor, the largest Oviraptoran um, ever discovered as well. So, um, yeah, let's cover this pack and see what it's all about as well as update 8 which is looking to be quite a substantial and yeah it's going to be a good update so the, the cretaceous predator pack will be releasing on the 30th of november which is next thursday um for me um so probably eight o'clock thereabouts and it will include four new species three carnivores and one omnivore that being the Gigantoraptor. So this key art I just put here, is that they always do a good job with it, and I really like how they've utilized the Gigantoraptor here as the flagship, funny enough. I mean, it's an omnivore. I didn't really think it would be the actual headliner of the pack. So, yeah, I mean, I guess they're just uh, highlighting the feathers there. Uh, looking really good. So first up is Tarbosaurus, complete with this, the um, Camp Cretaceous Hidden Adventure skin. And um, yeah, they've sort of given it a bit more muscle mass than um, its sort of emaciated look that it had in Hidden Adventure, as most people have said. Like it was a lot thinner, um, didn't have a lot of mass on it, whereas here, he's a heckin' chonker. <laughs> And you got the pinks, the blues, and the purples of the Hidden Adventure skin, and the white underbelly as well. I'm actually kind of looking forward to using this Tarbosaurus, as it, um, it's it been a long time coming. But uh, I know a lot of people don't really like the design, but uh, I mean, especially the skin as well. But um, I think it's mostly the, due, down to the spikes and everything, but I guess they were just trying to differentiated a bit from the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Um, in this next image you can see the more toned down natural um, patterns and skins that the Tarbosaurus will also be having so if you don't really like the Camp Cretaceous look you have the option here of using the various skins and patterns that you'll have available to you. So um, yeah I think um, many people would have loved to see if Frontier would have done a custom Tarbosaurus, so like have a Tarbosaurus all their own and provide it as a variant, but um, maybe they can't do that because they didn't do that for like Monolophosaurus and Nothosaurus, I mean they wouldn't have been able to do it for Scorpius Rex necessarily because um, that one had a decent design I think, um, but uh, maybe they just have to this is the only design they can use because it's Universal's word against Frontiers at the end of the day so this may also be the case for animals like Smilodon it may just have the base model of Camp Cretaceous which would be changed to be given realistic proportions to better fit with the game um, and I guess that's what they've done here with Tarbosaurus to um, sort of blend it in a bit better but um, what are your thoughts on Tarbosaurus? Um, one of my favourite new inclusions is the fearsome Utah Raptor, the largest dromaeosaur and an animal I will certainly be using in my parks. Like, look at it. I love the teeth, the feathers. Oh, the feathers are beautiful. Love how they've done that little um, crest of feathers on the on the top of the head. Yeah, it's really captured the Utah Raptor well. And I've honestly wanted this guy for a long time. And uh, it's finally here. This is the pretty much the fan favorites um, pack, getting a franchise dinosaur, a large dromaeosaur that people have asked for, a medium carnivore people have asked for, and a big feathered omnivore that 
uh, many people have actually been wanting for a long time. Speaking of that large feathered omnivore, we have Gigantoraptor. Easily the biggest surprise, as um, I would not have predicted this. Um, for a carnivore themed DLC, more like an omnivorous pack or an Asia DLC, but I love how it looks. The the feathers are gorgeous on this thing. I love the mohawk, the um the wing feathers, the tail feathers. They really add a um a great I don't know what the what the word is, but it's eye catching, certainly. Love the bright colors. And you have of course a br wide variety of um different skins like you got this darker um black or gray one you got a green one down there and a yellow one so you could have all the colors that you could want for this guy yeah it looks fantastic um in this second shot we also get a bit of a closer look at it and um it is certainly a curious animal to look at a giant chicken pretty much um i, I like um so I would like to know like what it's going to be um, like around other species and potentially guessing goats, given that it is quite large and could potentially be quite a dangerous animal if it got out. But um, yeah, I'm 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 looking forward to using this one. Um, last but certainly not least, yeah, we finally got Concavenator. The iconic Concavenator, the most highly anticipated species of both evolution games, at least besides the Therosaurus and Microceratus, certainly the most anticipated carnivore, well, that's for sure. And yeah, it's finally here, and it has a brilliant model too, beautiful skins, and I love what they've done with the quills on the on the arms and the back of the head. It gives it a real unique appearance, not to mention a large hump on its back. And yeah, I'm certainly looking forward to building different parks for these guys. Now onto a few update features for Update 8 releasing alongside the DLC. We have some new variants coming for some of the existing dinosaurs. Like this, the Allosaurus 2022. Um, I'll certainly be using this a lot because for those who don't know, Allosaurus is my favourite dinosaur. And I've sort of wanted to utilise that Dominion Battle of Big Rock model for different different parks but also giving it different skins so it's good that we're going to finally have it as a variant um we've also got 2022 dimorphodon yeah th this guy's little... <laughs> i mean it's tiny but i actually thought it was a little bit bigger the first time i saw it but now it's um the tiny little fella um yeah i'm not pretty not really going to notice it too much but i'll certainly try and utilize it Right on 2020, uh, 2021, um, that will be an interesting one to see as if it has a dark skin, we could technically recreate that male Pteranodon concept for Jurassic Park 3. As yeah, I'm curious to see what kinds of um, other colours are going to be for this guy. As this one, it's all like a flame going through the sky because you got like um, the black pants are creeping up and speckling out there but um yeah i'm looking forward to this one brachiosaurus 2001 is also becoming a variant and yeah i think these this guy will have some good skins here however i think the stegosaurus 1997 will be the most interesting to see as it kind of it sort of looks like that we could get quite close to some of the Cretaceous skins with it as that one on the left certainly um evokes camp cretaceous vibes um so we'll have to see what other patterns and skins that we'll have available for this guy but yeah potentially camp cretaceous and stegosaurus will um be within this guy <laughs> so a few more um update features we have pre-built layouts that are also coming to the game where you can have pre-built map in custom challenge mode Start from scratch in a potentially damaged or overgrown old park. And some other builds like the empty Jurassic World I've got currently. Um, yeah, I'd love to see if I could do a challenge mode in that. That would be fun. Um, some new capture mode features are also coming in. Um, with the ability to change the weather and time of day of the screenshots that you take. Um, yeah, 
perfect angle and lighting and you get some pretty solid pictures. A bonus is that the environment only changes in capture mode and will cut back to what it was um, before you opened um, capture mode. So, yeah, it won't change your game entirely there. Um, we're also getting a few new uh, um, decorations. So, we also getting that new fountain that was sort of teased in that in the prehistoric marine species packs announcement trailer as well as um many people's most exciting new additions in this dlc period benches picnic tables bins sun lounges and even some flower pots to place around um they did say in the same paragraph that um just to name a few of the new additions so there will be potentially more decorations in this update maybe even more placeable logs i don't know but i know there's some new banners or flags coming in this one as well so i mean that can be it and um honestly i'd like e yeah this is a chase slide <laughs> well i guess automatic hatcheries will allow players to select the species and um the population to be released from the hatchery this will allow for creating wild maps to be much easier uh, for players is yeah that that would be fun i can't believe you just changed on me damn it um a hatchery search function will also be available with the number of species increasing with this pack there will be a total of 114 species in the game so a search function will certainly be valuable to players wanting to be selective about the species that they will release uh, this isn't covered in the forum or Steam post, but Ranger and Paleo Veterinary Vehicles will now be officially be able to travel through tour gates. They did add this in the first game, and I'm glad to see it coming back in the second. As um, if you've got like a large park where you've got um, custom terrain built in and you can't really fit a gate in, the tour gates are probably going to be the only way that vehicles can get through. So it's a good option. Something else that they also teased in um the updates notes is pack chase behavior where select carnivorous dinosaurs will chase a prey item with another of its own species so it could probably work like a mod made by mr sigaka or is it me mr sig aka triangle triangles or mr sigaka triangles i i don't know um over on the nexus and one of the hunters will finish the hunt so like this, these two T-Rexes here chasing this Corythosaurus. So, one T, both T-Rexes would chase it, and then one would finish the hunt. So that would be fun to see. But yeah, let me know on what you are going to be more, most excited for for this um, DLC period, or the DLC itself, or the update that comes alongside it. Personally, it's a tie. <laughs> I I really like the new features that are going to be coming in the update, as well as all the new dinosaurs in this Cretaceous Predator pack. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. And um, yeah, if you're excited for the Cretaceous Predator pack, we'll certainly be covering it next week when it releases. And um, yeah, I'll be seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye.